so this is the new numbers for Magic the Gathering distributor cost. It should be pretty obvious what it is. If you buy one to 59 boxes, your distributor cost would be one to two. $122 or $195 for the collector's booster box. These are horrific numbers uh, given the fact that the collector booster boxes, there's a store dropping at 140 and the play booster, many people expect it to be around 100. So if you're buying from your distributor as a local game store, again, you have employees, you have overhead, you have rent, you have water bills, you got a lot of bills coming in, man. You got taxes. They got to do right now and it's just not worth it you know i actually looked at this business model from a cafe standpoint we talked to a few different cafe owners to see if it made sense for me to just buy them out and run a card shop slash cafe and it does not the distributor call i mean magic the gathering is probably a big product but their distributor cost is just horrendous um there's no way to make money from this the price is already, we're talking about murders of Carvalho Manor, is already lower than these numbers, even if you purchase uh, 624 of these packs. It's not good, man. It's not good. Um, now, you might be like, okay, are, are, is this every game? Yu-Gi-Oh is this way. Yu-Gi-Oh, the margins are paper thin, um, even less than Magic many times. I mean, Magic, you're just taking an L. But in games like MetaZoo, Sorcery, Locana, that's why these local game stores, they push new games all the time because the margins are just better. And then online people like Alpha Investment, that's why he pushes MetaZoo so hard and says so much so much bad things about Magic until until recently, right? Now he has no MetaZoo to really rely on, so he's got to rely on uh, you know, Magic again. But this is the real reason, right? It, it's the real reason. I'm not going to sugarcoat it to you. It's impossible for a game store to sell magic cards and break even or even make money. So people do it as a hobby. Like I always been taught, like when I opened my store, that you need 40% margin on the majority of items to carry it. 40%. We're talking about negative margin. We're talking about negative negative things right now i mean it's like guys it's gross but it, it actually gets even more sickening down the road because how how are you gonna make money from this like you know you, you might say oh support your local game store you're not gonna support them when it's you might support them it's a ten dollar twenty dollar difference not not forty fifty sixty dollar difference guys and that's kind of the margins they need magic the gathering would be very happy to just get rid of all local game. I had this discussion with my girlfriend about the cafe and so on. When we look at the margin, she is uh, her, her major in college is finance and business, and we and she've always wanted to own a business. So we looked at the numbers, and it, it simply does not make sense. If we do open a bubble tea store, it would sell bubble tea and then some like Chinese pastries and so on baked goods and that's probably the best business model we would not carry magic magic has been a loser product for the and people saying oh invest in it man if if the game the mother effing game store buying a distributor prices cannot quote invest in it at this cost how the hell are you going to do it when you buy from rudy chan with uh for even more money than this like a lot of these boxes are just junk they're just jank. I don't even know how to say it to you guys. It's you think the price on the, today is bad. Wait until uh, two years from now when it rotates out. The, the current state is just really, really bad. Oh yeah, let's read some comments. I had this exact conversation with my LGS owner yesterday. Meanwhile, Locana averages ninety per booster box at a one four four retail. And sorcery averages 83 on a 150 retail. He did not disclose numbers on other games, but was obviously very disgusted with the margins he needs to live at the MTG world. I was talking to my LGS owner, and he told me that his distributors keep allocating him. So even if he ordered at these larger numbers, he would not get the product. He has three different MTG wholesalers he can buy from, and all of them put a limit on his order 
maybe he's doing something wrong, but his store is the oldest LGS in the area and seems to have the best turnout. So it's just volume online. That's all they care about. So like a local game store is never going to have the volume online of somebody like Alpha Investments. They're just simply not. And they're never going to get the margin. So if you think Alpha Investment margins are bad, imagine in your local game store. Jesus, how can a local game store possibly make money on this? Better question, what would a markup have to look like for an LGS to buy into this? Wizard of the Coast doesn't view this as a problem. Yeah, Wizard of the Coast doesn't give a F because even if all local game stores disappear overnight, they still have boosters sitting next to the register at Walmart. Absolutely agree. Absolute real talk. I can't think of a single card shop in my region, Bay Area, that only sells Magic Booster Packs. In fact, I argue these stores are overwhelmingly focused on other products and the boosters are almost an afterthought. So the answer is this. Few of any LGSs are likely relying on selling boosters, boxes, or singles for even a modest portion of their sales. Absolutely. Are online sellers buying at the 1200 plus count for a bigger discount or just selling as a lost? Let's say you negotiate $100 per box on 1,248 1, boxes. That's a lot of money and you still have in hand and are on credit line. If you mean Car Shop Live, I don't know how they work. They're already selling at a loss. Sites like TCG charge a seller's fee around 10% of the sale. Plus, the cost of shipping a box is seven to ten dollars. Does anyone know what flesh and blood costs from the distributor? I feel like the margins have to be way better. Base price on the most recent flesh and blood set is fifty-seven. Currently, going on eighty-seven point six free on TCG Player, and flesh and blood mandates a minimal sell price, and they actively enforce it. Yeah, just ask Rudy Chan about that, right? He's not a fan of their floor but in fact you know it's actually what's saving their game so magic is uh oof magic is really going to bankrupt a lot of stores and this isn't just the amount of money that you have to put in to maintain a play area like i said how is card shop live able to sell play boosters for 99999 in collector booster boxes at Five one five four nine nine to make any money, they are not making any money. Thank you for sharing. We need more posts like this. Wizard of the Coast gonna get rid of all the smaller local game stores and force us to risk more online. Points at you, Amazon. So yeah, these numbers are really bad, guys. If you think Car Mar 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 Carlo Manor, like Taco Bell eating Rudy, is a good set. You have no idea how bad it is and how bad it will be. You have no idea how desperate people will be to get rid of this set when April hits. Some stores are already getting rid of the set because they realize what's coming. Um, you can't make money from this game no more. You just cannot.